Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to yet another episode of The Gloving Paradigm. Yes, I'm your host Peter aka LPD at Dubuque. And this week is actually going to be a really, really fun week for me because we get to cover another gloving programming theory. Yes, yes, yes! Yes, this is stuff that I'm making up on my own. Please don't at me. <laughs> this guy. Yes, so this is going to be an episode about gloving programming theory because this is something that I like talking about. This is one of those things when it comes to gloving that I just want more people to try out and think about more critically because this is something that does play in to your show. That's how it works. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. Okay, excuse me for that. Sorry. A few moments later. So yes, what is it that I want to talk about when it comes to a gloving programming theory? And that is your finger configurations. What do I mean by finger configurations? <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds confusing as hell, but allow me to explain. Um, okay. So, what do I mean by finger configuration and color programming theory? Or just gloving programming theory? What do I mean? What I mean by this is basically how you configure each of your fingers. So best way I can describe this is like, hey, I want to make these three be one set and these two a different set. That's that's what I'm talking about. So I don't. How else am I going to explain that? Anyways. So yes, we are going to be talking about the placement of your colors on which fingers and all that stuff. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and give you a huge amount of intimate details of like, oh, blue and red work right here and here, but you should put yellow here and here. No, 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 no. We are just gonna talk about different formats that people have cultivated over the years. Yeah! So, if you guys know, a very typical thing that people do is have a single color set on all 10 of their fingers. That's a very standard way most people go about it. But sometimes you see people who maybe only have these be the same ones and their thumbs are different or maybe even just their thumbs and pinkies are different and everything else is the same. Like, yes, you will see different variations and stuff like this. And they do play into different particular styles of gloving that most people might not even consider. Not only that, having these different kind of configurations really do highlight different fingers to really accentuate what they're doing within the show. Okay, if you have not checked out like my complimentary flash patterns video, you will find it right up there in the corner. And of course, you know, if you are also somebody who's never really looked into any of my color theory stuff, you should probably also go check that out. I also have one on accent colors and one that's also on complementary colors. So check both of those out. They're, they're actually really, really good. Ah, uh, no, I don't really feel like it. I at least felt like I did a good job on those. You're both just awful. But yes, so with your finger, finger, finger configurations, yes, you're going to have different variations that people have come up with. You know, we've seen them so much, but a lot of people don't think that there's a lot of credence to them and there's only certain ones that people will do on certain occasions. Yes, that is true. However, there's a lot more that can go into it that most people don't realize. Say what? And there's a lot of different esoteric ones that I've seen in the past. So please allow me to go deeper into this. Bless you. <laughs> first things first, I do have to thank you McKinley for providing this information for me. If it wasn't by perusing on the World Wide Glover Discord, which if you guys aren't on, you should probably get on because there's a crap load of resources there. People don't tell me what to do. I tell them what to do. But yes, thank you McKinley. You are the one that gave me this idea just because I perused through the Discord server and when I was going through the color swap section, this is the topic that came up and I just Love it. Five minutes later. So basically, my definition when it comes to a finger configuration is the configuration of the programming color sets on your fingers is essentially what it is. Sure, Jan. So color sets are pretty much the color programming stuff that I was talking about. You pretty much know where I'm going with this. So here's one major thing I definitely want to elaborate on when it comes to the finger configuration. Okay, so a big topic that you'll see 
with a lot of members in the community are things like, I don't like more than three colors in my color sets. And that's totally understandable. A lot of people, they see that as simplicity. But there are people who just like having a lot of color and they don't want to flood their color programming with, you know, seven colors on all their fingers. Okay, so understandable. So how do you fix that? Or how do you get around that? That allows you to have a lot of colors without flooding your your viewer with all those colors and your color selections. Very simple. You break them up and you set them onto each different finger. That's, there's your idea. This allows for more colors without feeling like your color sets are bogged down. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I've seen seven color strobe sets look good and I've seen seven color strobe sets look terrible. So it really depends on your color selection and your color programming because if you guys haven't checked those episodes out, I definitely suggest checking them out. They're there for a reason. Why I choose to get C's. Yeah, so with these particular setups, you know, you're allowed more colors without feeling like you're flooding your viewer and muddling the mixture essentially with your idle colors. You can have these different accent colors of your idle colors that really help accentuate that as well. There, there are reasons why people like doing this, okay? So, what are the configurations that we have established out here? Now, I will have to stress this these are my terms these are the terms that i came up with so please keep that in mind when i talk about these terms these are the terms that i have come up with to help elaborate there are other terms that people have used in the past if those work for you those work for you just please keep in mind that when i talk about them these are the terms that i'm using therefore there are the ones I'm going to be going with. Cool? Awesome. A few moments later. So, first things first. The first set I want to talk about is monochromatic. Now, if you're probably sitting here thinking, oh, he's just talking about one color. Yes, but not in the same fashion in this particular subject matter. What? Oh. So when I mean by monochromatic, I mean all 10 fingers are set up the exact same. So. Using red, green, blue as our default here, all 10 of them will be RGB. Boom, monochromatic. They're all the same. Now, some people might be asking, why do we do this? Why do we all just want one single thing? Well, the thing I will certainly tell you, the monochromatic configuration gives you what I personally believe is one of the cleanest shows. It is so simple, all the colors just blend very well. It is probably one of the cleanest things you'll ever see. It's very simple and it's very easy on the eyes. That's why most people kind of go with it. It's just, it's just really easy. There's not much thought that you have to put into it. Oh, I see. Yeah. So that being out of the way, let's move on to the next one, which is what I will call the enders configuration, which if you don't know what the enders configuration is, it's pretty simple. It's your ends, your, your thumb and your pinky. You know, these, these two little things are known as your ends. Okay. So when it comes to this configuration, these will be one set up and these babies will be a different setup. So let's just say these are being red and these are all blue. That is your enders configuration. What does this lend to? Well, it lends to, again to the very simplistic way of how the monochromatic configuration sets up to It's very simple, it's very easy, and it's very clean. However, this adds a level of spice to it, in my opinion, that allows you to work with things. So if you're somebody like me who likes doing this a lot in their shows, Especially this, I love doing this. You know, having these different colors and the rest of these do highlight that fashion. Not only that, the ambient glow that your other colors are gonna give off when they're down here, when you're doing stuff like this, do add to that effect, to a great effect, if you didn't know that. So, do keep that in mind. Now, moving on to the next one, we have shutter. Now, what do I mean by shutter? Shutter is basically just interchanging between your fingers. Now, a very typical one that we see is these three are the same colors and these two are gonna be the same color, okay? So let's just say these three are green and these two are blue, right? That's what I call shutter is, you know, shutter blinds, right? Okay. Now, what this provides is it's still very simple and simplistic to kind of like the enders configuration, but it kind of just breaks it up a little bit and kind of adds a much more a little cleaner hypnotic effect to it. That allows for the color blending to happen a little bit more easily and it integrates better. It really depends on how you feel about it. But this is another very typical one that we see. Sometimes you might actually see one hand inverted from the other, which is very typical as well. 
much, much, much later. All right, the next configuration I want to cover, I call it the yin yang configuration. If you want to call it a different form, that's fine. A very typical nomenclature that people use for this particular configuration is the heaven and hell setup or fire and ice, whatever. I typically stick with the yin yang because it just works for me personally. But if you want to say fire and ice or heaven and hell, go ahead. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I usually typically stick with the yin yang just because I like that. But as the name implies, one hand is configured in one way and the other hand is configured in the other. So one hand's red, the other hand's blue. Fire, ice. Get it? Ugh, you're the worst. What this provides is another form of simplicity, but it allows you to have like this whole wax on, wax off effect. You know, you kind of have like this cooling effect and also warm colors and cool colors and warm colors, cool colors, warm colors. It's very typical, at least in my opinion, it's very typical to see a lot of impactors go with this configuration because what some impactors like to do, not all of them, but some of them like to do, they like to invert their thumbs to be the opposite colors of what their hands are. So this will be this color, this will be that color. All right, so right hand will be left color, left thumb will be right color. You know, that's pretty much how they would have it configured. Whatever you say, Stone Cold Steve Austin. A lot of the times you'll see them have them all set up the same, so if one color is on one hand, the other color is on the other hand. Some people like to invert the thumbs a little bit because then they can do stuff like this, where it's, you know, the, the dominant hands thumbs turn off and the other thumbs lights turn on and it's all the same color kind of adds to that kind of ambiance you know depending on how you feel about going about your impacting that's it. there you go three days later next configuration i called the prismatic configuration now why do i call this a prismatic configuration because a lot of people like doing this and i get it and it's very very pretty and it adds a lot of color to it I call it the prismatic one is because the configuration of your idle colors are supposed to configure the, the, the colors of the rainbow. So very typically that I tend to see is people will do red, yellow, green, blue, purple. I've also seen people put red here, orange here, yellow here, green here, and blue here. You have different configurations. And I've even seen it where somebody is actually done from one hand to the other going red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, blah, 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 blah. Yes! That's awesome! You know, I've, I've seen people even configure it in that fashion. The reason why I call that prismatic is because the name implies it. It's, you know, you take a crystal and you put light through it, you get the prismatic effect of all the colors showing up through it, right? Prismatic configuration. <gasps> all right, next one I want to cover is called pair stacking. Now, what do I mean by pair stacking? There are different variations of this, but typically what you will see is two color or two fingers configured stacked next to each other. So these two would be configured one, these would be configured the other. You can also have these two configured one way and these two configured the other way and it's still considered stacked because when you have the other hand fall in the other way and you have them on top of each other, they're still paired stacked. Does that make any sense? Because the pinkies and the index fingers are the same. So therefore they're going to stack get it <laughs> no so yes that is what paired stacking configuration is now what does this really lend to well you can actually invert one of the other hands so when you're doing stuff like this it'll all be one color then you switch it around and it's all the different color but it's still one color you it really lends to a lot of illusionatory effects illusionatory is that even a freaking word it's a word now. Yes, uh, it does lend to your sleight of hand. It lends to the distraction and misdirection of the street magic performance that we like to do within our performance. This particular configuration does lend to that. Now, there are other ways you can go about it. You know, you can have these be stacked to each other and these stacked to each other and then your middle fingers be completely different. You can do that too. I've seen people do that. Not necessary, but you can do that. Now, the last one that I want to cover is known as the pyramid configuration. Now, what do I mean by the, com the pyramid configuration? Personally, this is my personal favorite, and this is the way I like setting it up because not only does it add to lend me more colors, but it lends to an accent color effect as well. So, the pyramid configuration is basically as follows. 
So you got your ender parts being one color, then you have your other two parts being another color, then your middle part, which is your middle finger, will be a third separate color configuration thing, okay? Why do people do this? First of all, it still lends to people doing stuff like this and allows for very interesting digits and dials and clusters and stuff like that. Not only that, but with your middle fingers being completely different than the rest of your hands, it adds the accent color effect into it. Not only that, you can also change the flash pattern so you have an accent flash pattern on your middle fingers as well. It is very typical to see people use regular strobe on all these fingers and then tracers on these fingers, okay? Very, very typical for people to do that. Uh, main reason why people like doing that is because the tracer or the solid or ribbon style effect really helps kind of add that crisp line to it that really lends to that whipping effect that really gives that clean look to the to the whips and flails and things like that and a lot of people do like that i'm one of those people that really like seeing that i really like it when people who are very whip heavy do configure their lights in that fashion because they are highlighting a key point of their show many months later now do you have to follow in this fashion no but this is something that i like to do you can change the middle to your index fingers so the index fingers are your your accent points but my opinion when it comes to your accent configurations i always want to have the longest finger be that because since your finger that is going to be the one farthest out you're going to that's going to be more pronounced when you do your whips and flails or any dynamic movements of that fashion so a few special notes that i want to talk about when it comes to this kind of configuration stuff right so special configurations is like continuity configuration. Now, what do I mean by continuity configuration? By this configuration is basically, let's take the shutter one example. So instead of it being reflective, like these being the same and these being the same, it's actually going, one hand's gonna be set up to the other one and this one's gonna be in reverse. So when you put it together like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, the pattern stays the same kind of a uh, palindrome effect but that's neither here nor there but yes you will actually kind of see those kind of configurations happen you know when these are put together and when these are put together that kind of gives you that whole continuous effect that's why i call it continuity 75 years later there is another one that people know out there that i have seen some people seldomly explore i can't remember the exact name of the performer but i will try to have linked it down below the light show where god i don't even remember the colors he was using i think he was using yellow and then using red now there was a very special configuration with it so one thumb let's just say i think it was his left uh, was red and his right pinky was red but everything else was yellow so he really kind of had this cool effect where he went like this and he was hiding all the other colors and he only saw red and he went like this and it was all yellow and it was actually really, really cool to see that kind of effect happen, right? I call that like odd one out. There, there are some interesting ones, like I'll even put one up here that I saw as well that some people have done in the past that were interesting. I, I can call it the odds one out. Go ahead and try it out if you want. There, there are certain special configurations that you can go with that can really lend to your performance in some fashion. Depends on how you want to tackle that particular thing. And of course, last thing I would probably have to say before closing off this episode is just experiment. Just experiment with your configurations. You don't have to stick with just one color set and put them on all 10 of your fingers. No, go go play around with the colors. Add more colors, take away colors, try things out. You know, if you wanna try, you know, two color configurations where you have two color strobes on all of your fingers, but you have them all different colors, do that. It allows you to have more colors but it breaks them up so it makes it easier for your viewer to digest them. Does that make any sense? 2,000 years later. So yep, I think that pretty much covers everything I want to cover in this particular topic because this is one of those things that I really like talking about. Uh, it's one of those things that I feel like people need to take more time in learning and think about a little bit more critically because this does lend to, to your show, even if it's very subtle, okay? I, I mean, Think about like when, when it comes to film language, there's things that are so subtle that most of the audience don't pick up, unless you're somebody like me who knows of this stuff and is actually actively seeking it out, okay? okay. 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 okay.
So yes, that's pretty much all for my episode. I would like to thank everybody who has listened slash watched to this point this far. I highly, highly appreciate that you guys do take the time and listen to what I have to say because I really do try to put out as best information as possible and I really try to help break down this information as easy as possible so it's just as digestible as possible. I'm out of here. So yes, thank you everybody who has listened to this watch so far. If it wasn't for you guys' continued moral support, it wouldn't have gotten to this point. But yes, if you have any questions that I did not cover in this episode, you have my social platforms, you can hit me up, just do there. You also have the comment section down below. And of course, if you like the content I'm making and you wish to help me make better content, you do have the wonderful, awesome opportunity to support me on Patreon. Okay, you need to let that oh go. Oh my god, okay. no one cares. It's so boring every day. Swear to god, there's my video right there that tells you all about the stuff, all my perks. Go check it out because I do it there for a reason. Go check it out. One eternity later. Yes, that pretty much covers everything. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for participating. And please let me know if you guys have anything. I do want to try to help you guys get into this a lot easier so if there's something that you are not clear on please let me know and i will try to clarify it the best way i can that is everything thank you guys so much for your support i absolutely love you guys but i am your host peter aka lpd dubuque and i'll see you guys all next week